Hey guys, welcome to The Gray State in episode number three in my EDC series. Today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of my plate carrier and uh, really building on the other videos that I have both in episode one, which was my normal every off day EDC kind of stuff that you guys were asking about. And then number two was my light duty load. So for those of you guys who are just kind of finding me for the first time in episode two, I fully disclose that I'm a working nationally registered state licensed paramedic. And uh, I also do have a uh, tactical certification as well. So I kind of run the gamut. I work in a couple different agencies. I'm right in between shifts right now. I work the last two days on truck. I'm into this whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing. And I'm going to be on truck the next two days. So I wanted to get out, get a quick video out the door to you guys. Keep the content coming for all of you guys who are, you know, honoring the stay at home right now, which is the right thing to do. Hopefully you guys, you, your families and everybody that you love is staying safe. And if you have any questions, stuff about like that, shoot it my way. I'm dealing with it on an intimately basis, um, almost on an hourly basis right now. Um, but it, it's my honor to be able to come out here and kind of show you guys what I'm kind of doing here with this kind of stuff and keep the content going. So that's really it, the that on this one. The only other thing I really want to talk about too is that hopefully you guys see how I take my philosophy of use from my EDC stuff and it translates into a couple of different roles in a couple of different agencies. And, and it's really today's more about the how and why I'm thinking about things in my setup. And, you know, I'm gonna show you all the gear that's there. You're gonna find that a lot of it's actually really basic. It's not a lot of stuff that's like super high in high in like cry precision or like feral concept, you know, feral concepts like a slicks or stuff like that that you see a lot of times on YouTube. This is gonna be more the practical duty side of what you could expect to use on an everyday capacity in these roles and some of the reasons of the why behind it. So that's really it. So I, as you guys can see here, I guess the only other thing I'm going to tell you too is that a lot of the stuff that's going to build on from the stuff that I had before. So a lot of it stays the same. So just translate, like I mentioned. So like I wear, I use the same Oakley standard issues. I also wear Ray-Bans or Smiths. It just depends, right? Um, you guys can go look at the other videos and see what I had there. As far as my pants, they don't change in necessarily in this setup, but how I run this stuff does. I try and move a lot of this stuff from down below and bring it up into my workspace because it's going to be a little bit more tighter of a package. I'm working it in a little bit different of a capacity. Um, other things I can tell you about too is I generally scrap my duty belt if I can, but all the normal stuff like the carabiners, all those kinds of things are there. But it's really about maximizing the efficiency of for the speed of work that I need to do under more stressful situations, or we'll call them direct threat or indirect threat. As paramedics, we tend to work in an indirect threat space for those of you guys who are familiar with TCCC or TECC or TPC. And the difference there really is direct threat is you're like in the stack and you're going, you're making first entry. Indirect threat, for those of you guys that don't know, is that you're 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 still you're trying to stay off the X or you're trying to stay in the concealed cover position, um, but you're there the threat is higher where it could go right to a back back to a direct threat at any moment. And that kind of lends itself to why I have this thing set up the way I do based on the agencies I work at. So with that being said, you guys, you know, your mileage may vary depending on the role that you're in. If you guys are paramedics or EMTs or part of a rescue task force or things like that, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's just really a personal preference. And that's the goal today is to show you how I have things set up and how I have them optimized. So with that being said, the carrier itself is actually, like I said, nothing super Gucci or, or glamorous. It's a Condor. XO Gen 2. They refreshed it about a, just over a year ago. It adds a little bit more ventilation to it. It adds some of the, the way that allows you to run both soft and hard armor at the same time. Currently, I have three plus ceramic setups. They're 10, uh, 10 by 12 shooter cuts that are curved, um, lightweight, take rifle rounds. I work in a couple of different capacities, so I like the extra protection. I work in areas that have handgun threats and I work in areas that have rifle threats and so I kind of upscale it a little bit and so I have my three plus plates in here that'll handle basically everything up to 7.62. Um, other things about it, it's really set up pretty basically. Um, I guess the other thing I can tell you about it too is that the reason I don't have something super exotic and while it might be a little lighter, a little bit more form-fitting, things like that, the cost goes up exponentially. And when you're thinking about a duty rig, when you're potentially probably going to have this thing get smoked on you at any given time, it's not really, I'm not getting that benefit out of it. It's not that much of a weight savings for me. The cut in, what it allows me to do is the extra width of the uh, width and weight of a, the minus, you know, the minuscule weight addition of a cummerbund, a full-size cummerbund allows me to really cinch this thing around me. I'm lucky enough that my body still allows for those kinds of things, but I need to be considered about what I'm going to be doing. I'm probably going to be working over somebody you know, and I'm going to be doing um, some more invasive type procedures, maybe IOs, IVs, things like that, innovations. So I need to be thinking about how that weight is going to carry on me and how it's going to move forward. And having the little extra fabric there really allows me to get a nice secure purchase around me so I don't have to worry about my gear doing stuff or getting in the way from what I don't need. Um, so that's kind of some of the, the why behind the, the condor, not something a little bit more um, glamorous. 
or high end. And then uh, some of the other stuff you'll see here, it just translates directly from, if it's not the exact same thing that I'm carrying in some other capacity, it's the equivalent version. It's just in a different place. So I have it ready on me all the time. Some of them are just duplicates. So first and foremost, top, the comms, same situation. I run the exact same comm setup um, between episode two and this one on my plate carrier. It's gonna be a Motorola Apex system. It's gonna be encrypted all bands that we run here in the uh, metro urban and suburban rural areas. Uh, do use in air so I can have that fidelity basically um, keep the chatter to a minimum outside of the box here so I can keep things more discreet and uh, clearly identified as a paramedic here. So when I'm on scene, people are not mistaking me for anybody else. Um, trauma shares, Leatherman Raptors. Again, you guys saw these in episode two. It's a duplicate pair. Now they're in black. I just keep them right here in my Molly on the outside of this map pocket, which by the way, I don't use the map pocket that much. For anything, it's Velcroed, it's kind of cumbersome to get to. But the trauma shears, I had one of those sets of the North American trauma shear um, tethering system, and I didn't like it at all. I took it off for a couple of different reasons. One, it kind of got in the way, and it kind of made things clunky and cumbersome and kind of clicked all over the place, and it was kind of bulky for what it did. Uh, second thing is, there's a lot of times where I'm gonna be passing off my trauma shears to somebody, and if I need to do that, it's either gonna get me hung up or it's gonna get me pulled towards them in that direction as we're working with speed. Not necessarily the best thing when I'm on scene, so I took that little gizmachi off of there, and I run these things just all by their lonesomes, and I've had no problems with it doing that. Uh, staying here on the bottom and going over from your left to my right, however it works, uh, Hogue Tactical Pen. Pen super important for me, one-handed operation. You guys have seen it now in a couple of videos. If you haven't, I'll put links into it. It's a really super cool pen. I'm not gonna go into depth on it. I have been rocking it for a while now and I have absolutely no gripes with it. I love it every more, every shift I have with it. I just like it that much more. The admin pouch itself is actually nothing super Gucci either. It's a Condor. I thought it was originally a Voodoo Tactical. It's not. Um, I run it more like as an IFAC or a mini attack pack. And I've got, I'll go into it here in just a second. Well, I'll just do it right now zips open and i've got things that you would expect a tactical paramedic to have in a plate carrier no surprise i've got some chest seals i've got hyphen vents from north american rescue halos also work really well they're both kind of the gold standard uh some quick clock combat gauze right here for wounds a couple non-adherent pads right off the bat i've also got a bunch of alcohol prep pads I usually have a couple extra pairs of gloves. I have a backup right in the rain pad in there. I tend not to use that. I do keep that down in my pocket. Other thing I usually have in this up here on top as well, but I have them right now is also gloves. Of course, PPE. From a Gucci perspective, tactical perspective, I don't go off and do all the whole bear claw or anything like that. I go through way too many pairs of gloves on a daily basis to really go through those. I use the ones from the hospitals and then also our own services. So I've got both black and blue. Blues are great for blood sweeps in this capacity. But you can go out, you can get the really cool stuff like the bear claws and things like that. Uh, I just, I don't use them um, personally because I just go through them too quickly. I, I'll probably go through legit like 50 to 75 pairs of gloves in 12 hours. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Outside of the admin pouch, the other reason I like this one is not because it has a teardown ID for my identification, but because it does have, I guess you could call it a pepper spray pouch, or I use it as a flashlight pouch. And for me, I've, for years, I've been running my old trusty, which is an EB2 backup from Surefire. It's a 2CR123A battery, it gives me momentary on and then full blast. So I can check reactivity of pupils, things like that. If I need to use a low light, I can do that. And then if I need to go full blast, I can. This is a 500 lumen version, which now seems kind of antiquated. And so I've been testing something else and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. I'm not gonna go into a full depth review right now on it, but I will be creating a video on it because this is something I've been using for a bit now on duty. It's from Olight, it's an M2R Warrior, and it's got a lot of things I really like about it, and then some things that I don't like about it, and it's keeping me from pulling the trigger on using this as my new duty light. Uh, but watch for a video on this soon, all right? So that's that, that goes right in there in my flashlight pouch. Again, right in my immediate workspace. Radio pouch, nothing super extravagant. It's from 511, does a great job. Keeps my Apex radio in there. I do have a fat Sharpie on here for writing on people if I need to put some important information on them and I don't want it getting lost. Sharpies are great for that. And then uh, over here on the side, it's a Cat7 tourniquet from North American Rescue. Again, kind of a gold standard right there. I am using a Blue Force Molly uh, quick holster right there for the, uh, the tourniquet itself. 
But that is really the tour of the plate carrier. Of course, other stuff, I'm gonna have bump helmets and ballistic helmets, so I'm not gonna get into that right now. Um, this is gonna be a quick video. Just I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on the plate carrier as I've been talking about it. Also show you how stuff just kind of migrates from everyday use, you know, whether it's a pen, flashlight, things like that. And then it just translates into a bunch of different roles. So that's really it for this one. Hopefully you guys found it informative entertaining, loosely informational. If you guys have questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna be back on truck the next couple of days dealing with this COVID-19 thing. Um, but by all means, I'll usually have my phone with me. I can check and see what's going on with the comments and interact with you guys. I appreciate the uh, support so far, things like that. And uh, hopefully you guys are, like I said, hopefully you guys are staying safe. You're at home, you're hunkered down, you have the things you need, you're with your family. You guys are having a great time. You're, you're staying sane and uh, I'll continue to pump out content as I can um, to kind of contribute and hopefully, hopefully give you guys something to watch and uh, check out while you're sitting at home, you know, trying to avoid the COVID. So I guess that's it for this one, guys. Until next time. Oh, like, subscribe, check me out on Instagram at Gray State Medic. I'll be posting stuff out there. I already do daily. So yeah, that's really about it for this time. Until next time, stay safe.